basket so well. They take good shots and they make the defense work. Henderson eyes this one. It's in the air and it is good. Henderson now with five points. Indiana has cut the lead back to five. Here's Dugan Fife for Michigan to Jawan Howard to Ray Jackson who's back in. Jackson on the left wing gives to Jalen Rose. Rose turns, drives, pulls up and fires a 16-footer that's an air ball, but it's picked up by Jackson who puts it up for there. Ray Jackson, his fifth point of the ball game. 26-19, the lead is back up to seven. Sharon Wilkerson across the timeline. Wilkerson to the right side. He brings it off to Brian Evans, down low. He turns, looks for help, passes back to Sharon, to Henderson on the inside, pass batted away by Injai, intended for Pat Graham out of bounds. And we got a timeout. Score. Michigan 26, Indiana 19, 7.46 to go first half. And we'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. A sports fans, play the two newest scratch-off games from the Hoosier Lottery. With Instant 21, you can win $2,000 instantly by beating the dealer's score. And with 7 come 11, you can win $3,000 instantly by having a lucky roll of the dice. On each game, there are four chances to win on every ticket. So don't miss your chance to win up to $3,000 instantly with the Hoosier Lottery. Make the most of any instant. Play new Instant 21 and 7 come 11 from the Hoosier Lottery, where you gotta play to win. If your goal is economical home comfort, PSI Energy can give you a home court advantage. Call PSI about a Smart Saver High Efficiency Heating and Cooling System or a Summer Saver High Efficiency Cooling System. With both systems, you enjoy reduced energy costs, enhanced home comfort, and lots of other energy saving values. Call PSI at 1-800-521-2232 about a Smart Saver or Summer Saver new home or an energy efficient system for your existing home. That's 1-800-521-2232. Here at the Assembly Hall, Indiana is trailing Michigan 26 to 19. We have 7.46 to go in this first half of play. The fans play the two newest instant games from the Hoosier Lottery. With instant 21, you can win $2,000 instantly by beating the dealer's score. And with 7 come 11, you can win $3,000 instantly by having a lucky roll to the dice. On each game, there are four chances to win on every ticket, so don't miss your opportunity to win up to $3,000 instantly with the Hoosier Lottery. Well, Don, Indiana is lucky right now to be down by only seven points. They've hit just four out of 18 shots. The Wolverines have hit 12 out of 24. That's 22% shooting for Indiana. Indiana's only hope at this point is they've hit nine out of 10 from the free throw line. The Wolverines just one of two, so that's eight points that Indiana's picked up at the foul line. Otherwise, they would be in big trouble. Indiana's turned it over seven times. The Wolverines have turned it over a total of three times. Rebounding is a 14 to 11 margin for Indiana right now. Well, TWA is proud to be a sponsor of Hoosier Basketball. Our team wishes yours the best of luck in winning the Big Ten Championship. TWA, the most comfortable way to fly. Right now, Indiana has Evans, Henderson, Graham, Bailey, and Wilkerson on the floor. The Hoosiers with the basketball down seven. Had Graham bounces to Damon. Damon Bailey on the wing. Spakes drives it inside. Lost the handle. It's stolen away. So Damon continues to have problems here in the first half. Jalen Rose gives to Jimmy King. King goes left to Fife. Down low to Howard. Back outside to King. King drives it right. Pulls up. Flies the shot. No. And a foul call on Allen Henderson. Henderson will be nailed on his first personal of the ball game. That is team foul four against IU. And Michigan will have the basketball. I think King will be going to the free throw line. He was in the act of shooting. Should be Jimmy King. Uh, decent free throw shooter. Hits half of them a little better. 62% of the season for King. He has eight points of this ball game. And we'll be at the line for two. Apparently they're asking for something to be wiped up at the other end of the floor. Some perspiration. And King now will go to the line. He'll have a couple of shots coming. 26-19 is the count. The Hoosiers have really had problems shooting the basketball here this afternoon. They struggled in the first half at Iowa as well, but they really hit their stride in the second half. So far today, they're right back to that troublesome shooting in the first half. King flies the free one. It bounces around and drops through. Jimmy King now with his ninth point of the first half of play. He and Juwan Howard have been the big guns thus far for Michigan. Howard has eight points in this contest. King averages 13.7 a ball game. 
And his second shot is also good. King now with 10. Indiana, 28-19 trailers to the Wolverines. The biggest lead of the game now for Michigan at 9. Here's Sherrod Wilkerson driving at right wing. Drives at baseline. Cut off. Brings it back out on the wing. Circles it backcourt to Bryant Evans. Evans down low. Having trouble. Turns around. Looks for help. There's the Pat Graham. Pat looks inside. Can't find Damon. Now and threw it away. Damon started to cut and he threw the basketball and Damon stopped. Here's Ray Jackson. He fires it home. Jackson scores his seventh point. And suddenly, Indiana's down 11, 30 to 19. Here is Wilkerson across the timeline to Pat Graham. Pat on the wing left, drives baseline, pulls up, fires, missed the shot. Rebound comes away to Ray Jackson, and Michigan is on the attack, up by 11. Jimmy King tries to make it 14, misses the shot, however, and the rebound pulled out of there by Henderson. Back the other way. Wilkerson, backcourt, fires it right to Pat Graham. Pat looks down low and threw it away again. Now, Fife on the break the other way, pulls up and scores. Dugan Fife has got his fifth point. The Hoosiers are suddenly down 32 to 19, and a timeout is called by Indiana. 32 to 19, 13 point lead for Michigan with 6.10 to go here in the first half of play, and the Hoosiers are totally out of sync. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. During this cold winter, you can save on quality products from your local participating Napa Auto Parts store. Count on the starting power you need with the Napa Legend 75-month battery. Now just $59.99 with exchange. And Napa's 12-foot-long booster cables with long-reaching, tangle-resistant cables and handy carry bag as low as $9.99. Save on these and other quality parts and accessories you'll need this winter. At Napa, we keep America running. Moving out of the city was a great idea, but the old farmhouse was drafty and dim. Call the REMC, my wife said. They have energy experts. REMC has special programs and rebates for their members. That's us, she said. So I called, and now we have the most efficient heating and cooling system you can get. Geothermal. It's safe, clean, and uses a renewable energy source, the earth. Geothermal was the answer for us. Besides, we didn't want that tank in the backyard anyway. Thanks, REMC. Well, back once again to the assembly hall where Indiana is totally out of sync right now. And Bob Knight looks for the answer as Indiana trails Michigan 32 to 19 with six minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Hoosier basketball brought to you in part by Hooks Drug Stores. More of what a drug store is for. Well, on Indiana shooting continuing to drop down. Just four of 19, now 21 percent. Indiana's had only one basket, uh, one field goal in the last... Uh, Seven minutes to play. They scored one at 13.56. They scored another one at 9.49, and they haven't scored any baskets since then. They have shot some free throws. They've now hit, been outscored eight straight points and 12 of the uh, 12 to three run since the 9.06 mark when Indiana got it down to five points. But right now, as you said, Indiana's absolutely out of phase. Allen Henderson does have 10 rebounds right now. But uh, that's about the only thing of any consequence is Damon Bailey has been totally shut out. He is 0 for 3 right now. He hasn't even got a look at the basket. Brian Evans is 1 for 4. Alan Henderson has missed all four shots he's taken. Only Pat Graham has any kind of shooting at 2 out of 5. And he just sat down for Steve Hart. So Hart is in the ball game. Here comes Sherrod Wilkerson across the timeline. Sharon backcourt gives to Brian Evans. Evans circles it back outside, and here's Ray Jackson taking it right away from him. Jackson all the way, and here's a block by Steve Hart, but it's going to be a foul. <laughs> Steve Hart came down the floor and really did a job on Ray Jackson's shot, but Jackson won't go to the line. Steve Hart picks up foul number one, and Jackson will go to the strike. The Michigan players right now are all smiling like maybe Steve Hart got lucky there, but I don't think they've seen the kid play much if they think he got lucky with that leap. 32-19 is the score. 5.55 to go, first half of play. And Jackson is at the free throw line. Seven points to his credit. Good free throw shooter, 70% of the season. And he drills the first there. He's got his eighth point of the contest. Jackson will have one more shot coming. It's a 14-point Michigan lead. 
Jackson's second shot is also good. Jackson now with nine. 34 to 19. Indiana right now has trailing by 15 points. Here is Steve Hart. Down low to Damon. Damon turns, fades, fires, and misses. Rebound knocked away. Hart got shoved, but the rebound is pulled out of there by Maktar Injai. Down the floor to Jackson. Jackson kicks it back out to King. King now in backcourt clears to Dugan Fife. Fife goes to Jackson on the left wing, guarded by Bailey. Jackson fakes, works, lost the handle, almost lost it out of bounds. Here's the pass to Fife, however, inside of Ninjai. Back out it comes to King. Jimmy King, top of the key, left side to Ninjai. He drives it out front, turns around, lost the handle, ball stripped away. Ninjai has got it back, and we got a whistle. Foul call will go against Bryant Evans. So Evans now picks up his first foul of the ball game. The team fouls have gotten to six, and the ball will be taken out of bounds by Michigan. 5-12 to go in the first half. The Wolverines will have the one and one on the next Indiana foul. Fife gets the inbound, and right side pass to King in the wing. Jimmy King clears it out to Jackson. Jackson top of the lane, holds high, dribbles it once, clears it right side to King. King back out to Fife. Fife down inside to Jackson. Jackson pumps it up, lost the handle, jump ball called. And it'll go, possession turn to Michigan. So the Wolverines maintain possession. And the inbound play will come underneath the Wolverine basket as Juwan Howard now will check back in. A 15-point Michigan lead, and the Wolverines have a chance to add to it right here with 4.58 to go. Indiana is shooting their way out of this game early. They must get back into it quickly here before the break or they're going to be in real trouble in the second half. Fife and backcourt. Holding up one finger. Indiana needs a stop and a couple of buckets in a row. Here is Fife driving it left. Swears it away to Rose. Jalen Rose back out to Fife. Three on the way is no good. And the rebound inside. Steve Hart clears the board. Gets it to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson quickly up the court on the right wing. He'll pull it back outside to Damon. Bailey drives it right. He clears to Steve Hart. Hart back to Allen Henderson. Henderson looks low. Can't find Evans. Goes out to Hart to Sharon. Wilkerson on the right wing against Jalen Rose. Fakes. Cross courts it to Damon. Baseline. He is cut off inside. Then turns. Puts it up and got it. His first basket of the game. And a nice drive to the hole by Bailey. 34-21. Michigan by 13. A whistle. And apparently a foul away from the basketball against Indiana. Sharon Wilkerson gets nailed on a personal. That'll be his first. And now the one and one into effect for the Wolverines. 4.08 to go in the half. And Indiana is down 13 points. And Jalen Rose will go to the line. Todd Leary is getting set to check back in for IU. Rose at the stripe. Has two points in the ball game. He's a good free throw shooter. Hits 75% from the line. And this one is around no good. And the rebound comes off to Jackson, who misses the rebound shot. And Allen Henderson's got the board. Off to Sharon. Wilkerson jumps it to Damon. Bailey inside the heart. Turnaround jump shot. No good. Tip up. Oh, it went in. Brian Evans. And that's his seventh point. Indiana gets the couple of baskets we talked about. And it's an 11-point Michigan lead. And the Hoosier fans are back in it again. Down low. Here is Howard. Turn around, jump shot. No good, and Brian Evans has got the rebound. Evans jumps it out. Steve Hart comes up with it. Gives it to Wilkerson. Now you down the floor. Evans with the basketball. Evans, baseline drive inside. Scoops it up and got it. Brian Evans is my point. And the lead has been cut to single digit. 34-25. Now fight. The King of the right way. Down low to Jackson. Back to King. King outside the five to Jawan Howard. Howard in backcourt to King. Crowd is on its feet. Here is Jalen Rose. He drives, fires, and missed it. Rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Michigan. Touch last by Brian Evans, they say. The ball will belong to the Wolverines underneath their own hoop with three minutes left in this first half. 301 to be exact. Sharon Wilkerson sits down. Todd Leary comes in. The inbound to Jackson, the Fife and backcourt for the Wolverines. Here's Fife. Stops, looks, gives it off to King. Jimmy King inside, the ball knocked away, a foul called, and Steve Hart gets nailed on it. Hart will be called for the personal, that'll be his second, and again it will send Jalen Rose to the free throw line. So one and one, 
And Rose will be at the strike with 2.52 to go in this first half. Our game brought to you by Napa. Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Well, Indiana finally showing some offensive spark. And as you indicated, that helped the crowd a little bit, which has got to help the ball club a little bit. Jalen Rose at the line with two points to his credit. Missed his last attempt from the stripe. His only attempt thus far. And again, he has a one and one. And again, oop, this time it doesn't roll in. It rolled around and wouldn't drop. Henderson rebounds to Bailey. Damon drives baseline right, pulls up, fires, scores! Bailey has his sixth point of the ball game. And that was a big hoop. Here is Rose the other way, misses, and Bailey's got the rebound. 34-27 and a foul. Rose or Howard got nailed on the foul as Damon Bailey hit the deck. Let's see who they call it on. And the Indiana fans are really into it as Jalen Rose gets nailed in his first person. 34-27. The Hoosiers all of a sudden have found their eye. Eight straight baskets, or eight straight points, we should say, for Indiana after being down 15. Damon Bailey at the line has six points, and he has hit two big buckets in a row. Free throws coming now. The first in the air is no good. Rebound batted away, and Michigan's got it. Injai off to Jimmy King. Back up the floor comes the Wolverines. 2.25 to go in the half. Left side, Jackson down low to Howard. Jawan Howard out to fight. Fight. In backcourt on the dribble. Gives it left side. It comes off to King. Jimmy King outside to Jackson. Fast pass to Fife. Fife down inside to Howard. Back to Fife. Now to King. King can't get the shot away. Back to back out with eight seconds on the shot clock. King to Fife. Three on the way. Short rebound. David Bailey. Up court to Steve Hart. And the ball knocked away. And Hart got knocked down and no foul call. Here comes Michigan. Dugan Fife to Juwan Howard. Back outside to Jimmy King. King gives the fight. Right side pass to Injai. Injai bounces to Howard. Now way to Fife and Fife on the wing left gives to Jackson. Three point shot of the way. Off the mark again. Rebound Injai for Michigan. Michigan has the ball and the ball is knocked away. And we, what do we got? Ryan Evans gets nailed. Evans has picked up his second personal. 1.30 to go. First half of play. Indiana is down 34-27. It was much worse moments ago. This ball game brought to you in part by Squadron Herbicide. With Squadron Herbicide, you can strike early and strike hard to get full season control of over 50 grasses and broadleaf weeds. Matt Carinjai fires the free one, no good, and the rebound comes off to Brian Evans. So everybody's struggling from the line right now. Here's Todd Leary for IU to Steve Hart. Drives the baseline, scoops at the Henderson. Shot up, it's no good but a foul. Injai will be called for the first one. That'll be his second. And it'll send Alan Henderson to the free throw line who has scored only free ones this afternoon. He's hit five out of six from the line. Well, nobody's hit a free throw the last four times. Either team, two each. Each team has been there twice and failed to score on the front end of one and one. Two shots will be coming now to Indiana on every foul committed by Michigan with 1.19 to go. Henderson's first attempt in the air, and it is good. Six points for Allen Henderson. Indiana's now cut the lead down to six, and they were trailing by 15, Max, a couple of minutes ago. They certainly were, and they've been on a bend. They've hit four of their last five shots. Michigan has missed the last six they've taken. They're only one of ten from three-point shooting today. Olivier St. John is coming to the ball game. Here is Henderson's second shot. Good, and Allen hits them both. He's got seven. Now, Indiana's down just to a five-point deficit. Fife to Jackson, to St. John. He turns around. Kicks it away to Jimmy King. Inside to Howard. Jawan Howard outside to Fife. Fife dribbles it left to Howard. Back out to Fife on the wing. Now to St. John. Top of the key to Fife. Inside ball knocked away, and Damon Bailey's got a steal. Bailey up the court. Damon in backcourt on the dribble. Slows it down. Off to Steve Hart. Down low to Henderson and a whistle and a foul. And Jawan Howard and Alan Henderson hit the deck. Let's see where the foul call or who it goes against. 
I think it's going to go on Juwan Howard. Yes, it will. That is his second foul. So Juwan Howard now nailed on two. 34-29. Indiana down five. And again, Allen Henderson to the line with seven points. Again, all coming for the strike. And Sharon Wilkerson will check back in. And Steve Hart will sit down. IU is 11 of 13 this afternoon from the foul line. So Allen Henderson will try to add more. Richard Mandeville may be coming into the lineup now for IU. 34-29, and the lead could be cut to three if he can handle both of the free ones here. Henderson came into the game hitting just 63%, but so far today, seven out of eight. Henderson eyes, flies, and hits. Eight points for Allen. He has cut the lead to four. He'll have a chance to cut it to three. Bobby Crawford checks in for Michigan. Mandeville comes out of the ball, or into the ball game for IU, and out goes Brian Evans. And Henderson at the line. Indiana on 11 to nothing run right now. Henderson eyes the second. 48 seconds to go in the half. The shot is good. Henderson's got nine. And Indiana now trails by just three, 34-31. Here is Spike. Left side pass, almost stolen. Henderson had a block of it, but it came into Fife's hands. Here's Jackson to Fife. He drives it right, down to the right wing. Pulls up, looks low, goes to Dugan... Uh, to a Juwan Howard turning oh he threw it away David Bailey out left to Sharon off to Todd Leary takes it all the way scoops it up no two players hit the deck and they call a charge on Todd Leary Leary gets nailed with a charge that's his first foul of the game and the Hoosier fans have not liked what they have seen from the officiating thus far but that's to be understood that's the way it is when you're in the home court and aren't getting the benefit of a lot of the calls. Dugan Fife will bring it up for Michigan. 18 seconds left in the half. Michigan may go for the last shot of the half. Ray Jackson in backcourt. Jackson slides it to the right side, brings it back to Dugan Fife. Seven seconds. Fife, backcourt, circles left. Down in the corner to Jimmy King. He drives, shoots it up, misses a shot. There's a charge the other way. Jimmy King gets nailed on his second personal foul and a charging violation that hammered Allen Henderson. So IU with 1.2 seconds to go in the half will get apparently a long inbound or try to have some kind of an inbound pass here. Bob Knight's making a change. He'll send in Pat Graham. So both teams make a change or two in this situation. Sharon Wilkerson will inbound, fires to Damon Bay or to Todd Leary, throws up a half-court prayer, it's no good, and we're at the end of half number one on a wild comeback effort by Indiana. Down 15 moments ago, the Hoosiers trail Michigan at halftime, 34 to 31. We'll be back to recap the first half scoring as we begin the Jeep Eagle Halftime Show. This is Indiana University Basketball from their field sports. Visit the home of the hottest stars and hottest shows, all in the ninth wonder of the world, Branson, Missouri. Through Adventure Tours, you get the very best in entertainment. With tickets to Shoji Tabushi, Tony Orlando, Mel Tillis, Ray Stevens, Andy Williams, and many other performers. Book with Adventure Tours and receive first-class treatment riding comfortably to Branson in your own chartered coach. Call Adventure Tours now at 1-800-747-8333 for fast, friendly service. And see the very best in entertainment in Branson. 1-800-747-8333. Imagine traveling to the finest entertainment and getting paid for it. It could happen as a tour coordinator through Adventure Tours. For a limited time, just by getting a group together to see the hottest acts with the best tickets, you can enjoy fully commissionable packages available for just $2.99 per person, plus $500 in free long-distance calls for your group. It's first class all the way with Adventure Tours. Enjoy a trip to Branson and tickets to Shoji Tabuji, Tony Orlando, Ray Stevens, Charlie Pride, and more. Travel and get paid for it. Call Adventure Tours now, 1-800-474-8333. In the battle against weeds, there is a winning strategy. Strike early, strike hard. Strike early with Squadron Herbicide Soil Applied in conventional and conservation tillage, especially no-till. Strike hard with Squadron to control over 50 broadleaf weeds and grasses, including common and giant ragweeds, seedling Johnson grass, nightshades, pigweeds, common sunflower, and cockleburr. Then reap the rewards in the field of battle. For to the victor go the spoil. See your Cyanamid Agri-Center dealer and always follow label directions. 
Here's the Indiana Women's Sports Update, brought to you by State Farm Insurance, a major supporter of women's athletics. Today, the IU women's basketball team is facing another stiff test, playing at Ohio State against the number 17 Buckeye women. Ohio State was the 1993 national runner-up. The IU women are averaging nearly 25 more points than its opponents this year, scoring almost 84 points per game. Shirley Bryant is sixth in the nation in field goal percentage of 65.4%. This women's update is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, a major supporter of women's athletics. Once again, we are at the Assembly Hall. We are at halftime, and Michigan leads Indiana 34-31 at the break, but it could have been much, much worse. Indiana was down 15 points not too far back, and all of a sudden, they got it going finally. Let's take a look at the individual scoring in the first half of play. First of all for Michigan, Jalen Rose has a field goal for two points, one personal foul. Dugan Fife has two field goals, one free throw, five first half points, and two fouls. Juwan Howard, four field goals, eight points, two personal fouls. Jimmy King picked up four field goals, a pair of free throws, ten first half points, and two personal fouls. Ray Jackson has three field goals. One of those was a three-pointer, a pair of free throws, nine first half points, and one foul. Leon Derricks played briefly, did not score, but picked up two personal fouls. Bobby Crawford played briefly, did not score or foul. Olivier St. John, same story, no fouls, no points. And Mokhtar Injai did not score in the first half. He picked up two personal fouls. So at halftime, Michigan is being led by Jimmy King with 10 and 9 points for Ray Jackson. For Indiana in the first half, Damon Bailey got off to a very slow start but finally picked up and got a couple of buckets before the first half came to a close. Two field goals, two free throws, six first half points for Bailey, and one personal foul. Pat Graham, a pair of field goals, one of those a three, five first half points, and two personal fouls. Todd Leary did not score, picked up one personal. Alan Henderson didn't score a field goal in the first half, but he made up for that with nine out of ten from the free throw line, nine first half points for Alan Henderson, and one personal foul. Todd Lindemann did not score or foul. Steve Hart did not score, picked up two personals. Ryan Evans threw in three field goals, one of those a three-pointer, two free throws, nine first half points for Evans, and two personal fouls. Sherman Wilkerson, one field goal, two points at the break, one foul. Richard Mandeville played, did not score or foul. So Indiana at halftime being led by Brian Evans and Alan Henderson, each of whom have thrown in nine points thus far. Max, look at those team stats. Well, Don, Indiana, after late in the half, was shooting only 21%, ended up shooting 31% for the half, eight on 26. Michigan, 14 of 34, just 41%. That's after they hit six of their first 10 shots. Three-point shots, neither team can do anything. Two of 10 for Indiana, Michigan, one of 10. Three throws, Indiana, 13 of 15, and that saved the day for them. Five of nine for Michigan. Indiana out-rebounding the Michigan team by a 23 to 16 margin. Allen Henderson's got nine. Damon Bailey's got six. Point, uh, point runs. Bailey's first field goal came at 4-11 left in the second half to show you what kind of a job Michigan was doing on Damon Bailey. First Indi half. Uh, excuse me, the first <laughs> half. You're right. Uh, Indiana was down by 15 with 5.55 to go. That's after Michigan had scored 10 straight points. And then Indiana turned around and scored 12 straight points. And that's where we are right now, 34-31. Well, Max will return with today's halftime guest, the Hooks Drugstore halftime guest in a moment. Scott May will join us. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Get your Beaver Dam Free Press. Get your Beaver Dam Free Press. Includes a Beaver Dam in menu. Well, you're a cute little fella, aren't you? Oh, what you got on your little menu there, Wood? <laughs> oh, you're very funny. It has prime rib, lobster, steak, along with salads, yeah. appetizers, and sandwiches. Sounds like one of the mayor's snobby places. Shirt and tie place, you know, Garso. No, the Beaver Dam Inn has elegant food at casual prices, and I don't think you own a tie, Harv. How'd you know my name? It's on your belt buckle. Oh. The Beaver Dam Inn. Elegant food at casual prices. 1200 Francis Street in Monticello. And boys, don't forget about Touch of Class Catering. They're available for all your catering needs, whether it be for holidays, anniversaries, birthdays, or just getting together with friends. And on Sunday and Monday, the Beaver Dam Inn is available for your parties. Now, don't forget, that's the Beaver Dam Inn and Touch of Class Catering, located at 1200 Francis Street in Monticello. 
Watson Construction Company knows you've had a hard time finding someone to service your electrical and mechanical items. That's why Watson Construction has stepped forward to offer you what you want, service and installation on anything you need. Watson Construction even does drain cleaning and pipe fine. If you need something serviced quickly, you should call Watson Construction for 24-hour emergency service. The only service contractor you'll ever need, Watson Construction at 564-4228. The fine folks at Easter's Tavern and Keister's Tavern warn young listeners that drug abuse is no joking matter. Statistics show that thousands of people, many of them teenagers, die every year from the use of recreational drugs. And it is the leading cause of adolescent crime, so be smart, don't start. Say yes to education and no to drugs. This important message from Easter's Tavern and Keister's Tavern in Delphi. They're always concerned when it comes to the safety of our youngsters. That's Easter's Tavern and Keister's Tavern on State Road 18 in Delphi, where Mike, Marge, and the staff wish friends and customers a safe, healthy New Year. We're here at halftime at Assembly Hall in Indiana, Michigan, battling in another one of those typical Big Ten battles. Indiana trailing Michigan 34 to 31. They've never led in this half, but they've been down by 15. They're down by three now. And Scott May, who has been in some of these battles in the past, a member of the NCAA championship team in 76. Scott, uh, these two teams really battling here today. Yeah. It's been a pretty good game so far. Uh, I think the team that uh, will take the ball to the front of the rim and take the ball to the basket uh, and force the referee to, to, you know, to call, to blow the whistle, to call fouls, uh, will come out on top. Uh, speaking of that, the Indiana fans haven't been too happy with what they've seen here as far as the referees are concerned, but that is not exactly unusual, is it? Yeah, they're, you know, a little nervous maybe, a little inconsistent, but uh, again, you know, IU's got to come out in the second half, be aggressive, and play hard. Well, Indiana, it appeared to me, was trying to take the ball to the basket in that first half, but Michigan was doing a pretty good job defensively. Yeah, I thought their game plan, was, looked like to me, was pretty well, uh, you know, cut off the middle, cut off Henderson, uh, cut off Bailey's drive to the bucket. Uh, it worked for them for about the first 15 minutes, and then uh, they let IU back in the game the last seven or eight minutes, and uh, I think it should be a very interesting second half. What would you uh, react to this? Indiana just two of ten for three-point shots. This is the ball club that hits about 48 percent. They're only down by three. You'd have to think that uh, things might not be the ba as bad in the second half. No, I think that's uh, you know a pretty good situation to be in. Uh, again, three-point shots not working tonight, so hey, you got to look for some other ways to score, and I think tonight, big game like this, uh, referees excited, big crowd. You take the ball to the bucket, force the referees to call fouls, and uh, you should be in pretty good shape. Scott, do you recall back games like this? You guys played Michigan three times in your championship year. Yeah, Michigan uh, has always been a thorn in our side. Uh, tough, aggressive, good players, good athletes. Uh, even back then, Ricky Green, Wayman Britt. Uh, Phil Hubbard, all talented kids. Uh, we had three tough games with them my senior year, and uh, luckily we, we came out on top. Coach Knight, uh, when he gets involved in this kind of a game, is a pretty good floor coach, isn't he? Yeah, um, you know, he makes you aware of every situation. You know, he doesn't leave anything out. Uh, makes you understand that, you know, every turnover, every loose ball, every possession is important. In a game like this where, you know, score is close and will be close in the second half, I think you got to, you know, you got to take care of the ball and take care of every possession. What about this ball club? Uh, as you look at it now, they've played uh, a little better than half their games or right at half their games. Uh, what do you think about this Indiana team? Well, I think they're interesting to watch. Uh, a real good shooting team when they shoot. Uh, I'd like to see Pat Graham shoot the ball a lot more uh, when he's open, not even thinking about it. Uh, I'd like to see uh, Lindemann come in the game and be aggressive like he was in Iowa. And I think uh, especially those two guys can come in and do those types of things. Uh, you know, I think IU will be tough. What about David Bailey's play? Well, I think Bailey's just said, hey, it's my senior year, and I'm going to go out and have some fun, and I'm going to do the things I'm capable of doing. And I think that, you know, the whole state of Indiana is seeing that now. Uh, looks like to me he's happy, and he's just having a lot of fun. Injury's always a problem. They were a problem in your career. Brian Evans playing with a harness on his shoulder, that's got to be tough to play that way. Yeah, I think so. It's just something that happens. It's part of, it's part of the game. The season's long, and, you know, bodies are, are banging against each other, and uh, uh, he went down a couple of games ago with a bum shoulder, and it looks, looks like to me he's fighting back, playing with the harness, and uh, he's holding his own. What about Michigan? Uh, do you think they're uh, close to what they were last year? Well, when you lose a player like Weber of his caliber, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be tough to replace. But it looks like to me, uh, they're playing more of a, 
a team game. They're running the floor. They're a little smaller than they than they were last year, but uh, looks like to me, uh, Coach Fisher is done a good job in putting them together and you know they're right at the top of the pack what about the big 10 as a whole i think they're about six or seven really good teams uh it won't be a cakewalk for anybody uh, i think when you come to go to places and play on the road purdue wisconsin teams like that uh they're going to be tough to beat at home so you're going to have to come to play every night and and be ready to play what's the flight right now in the dressing room what do you think coach knight's saying well i just think that he's trying to you know relax everybody and simmer everybody down and say hey you know guys you know we got to rebound at both ends we got to be be aggressive we got to take the ball to the bucket and when you got something a good look at the basket you know shoot it don't don't hesitate and uh you know i think that frame of mind they'll come out pretty tough and be ready for the second half 30 seconds scott what's scott may doing these days well nothing really different than i have in the past uh, i live here in bloomington i'm in the real estate business and uh i'm enjoying a good game <laughs> Scott, appreciate your coming by, and for being our guest, we'd like to have this gift certificate from D-Dan's gentlemen's ladies' clothiers in the North Willow Mall in Indianapolis. Anytime, Thank you Mike. so much. Thank you. Scott May, our guest here at halftime, 34-31. Indiana leads the, or trails the Michigan Wolverines with uh, this second half just coming to an end. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Thanks. Okay, Max. Good times. WNJY Delphi. And great oldies. Joy 103. 34 to 31 margin. The Michigan Wolverines have come back out, Don, and this second half is about to get underway in just a couple of minutes. All right, we'll be back in a moment after we pause for this two-minute timeout. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. If your goal is economical home comfort, PSI Energy can give you a home court advantage. Call PSI about a Smart Saver High Efficiency Heating and Cooling System or a Summer Saver High Efficiency Cooling System. With both systems, you enjoy reduced energy costs, enhanced home comfort, and lots of other energy saving values. Call PSI at 1 800 521 2232 about a Smart Saver or Summer Saver new home or an energy efficient system for your existing home. That's 1 800 521 2232. You can count on Hook. Now, Hooks gives you more with RX Watch. The RX Watch computer does more than other drugstore computers. It checks your medication against pre identified health conditions. It only takes a minute to sign up, and it's free. With RX Watch, we do more than just fill your prescription. Hooks, more of what a drugstore is for. When you want more, Hooks gives you more. More of what a drugstore is for. Last year, over a million and a half cars were stolen. The thieves who took those cars not only stole from the rightful owners, but they robbed everybody who pays car insurance premiums. That's why State Farm works with car makers to make new cars harder to steal, and why we work with law enforcement officials to recover cars that are stolen. Because when a thief steals any car, he steals from all of us. This message brought to you by State Farm and your local State Farm agents. The heart of a winner. It defies expectations. A quick fake to the left, fake to the right. What's he going to do next? It defies convention. What a remarkable display of teamwork we're seeing here tonight. And on occasions, it even defies gravity. Whoa, a big slam dunk. He was just hanging in the air. No one could touch him. At Pioneer Hybrid, we're proud to support the Indiana Hoosiers. And we salute everyone who has the heart of a winner. See your Pioneer sales representative for the variety right for you. Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall. We are about to get the second half of this basketball game underway. For being our guest at halftime, Scott May received a gift certificate from D-Dance Gentlemen's and Ladies Clothier of Indianapolis. D-Dance is updated classic clothing, sportswear, and accessories for men and women. They're open daily, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Thursday till 9. D-Dance clothing to complement your lifestyle on West 86th Street at Township Line Road in the North Willow Mall in Indianapolis. Well, Indiana... Coming back from 15 down to a three-point deficit at halftime. Hoping to get started in the second half like the end of the first half of play. Certainly in the shooting department where they hit just 32% of the first half. 
but Michigan Max didn't take great advantage of that either with 39 percent. Hey, Michigan didn't score in the last five minutes and 55 seconds. That's kind of unusual for a ball club like theirs that can score so well and have such athletic talents out there. It's kind of unusual for Indiana to shoot that poorly, too. It certainly is. That's, that's way below their average. Coming out of the floor for IU will be Damon Bailey, Todd Leary, Alan Henderson, Brian Evans, and Steve Hart to start the second half. Out of the floor for Michigan, Juwan Howard, Dugan Fife, Ray Jackson, Jalen Rose, and Jimmy King. Their original starting five. Ten-point effort by King to lead all scores in this game. Nine for Ray Jackson. And Indiana's Alan Henderson and Brian Evans each with nine. Damon Bailey, who really struggled to get started, now with six points to his credit. And the Hoosiers get the ball to start the second half. The inbound, Steve Hart lobs it away to Todd Leary. Leary brings it up. Leary, working with a heavy brace in his right knee, drives it toward the right side, gets it to Damon. He pumps a three, and it's short. Rebound, it comes long, it goes to Jalen Rose. Down the floor, Rose across the timeline to King. King in backcourt. On the wing left, flips it outside to Jackson. He goes to Jalen Rose, who fakes, drives in, puts it up and scores, and Steve Hart's call for the foul. So Jalen Rose hits his second basket of the game, his fourth point, and has a chance at a three-point play here as Steve Hart quickly picks up his third personal foul. So Michigan on top, 36 to 31, a five-point lead, and Rose will try to take it to six right at the outset. Rose, 75% free throw shooter, but was 0 for 2 in the first half of play. Jalen Rose at the line. Flies the free one, and this one drops. He's got his fifth point of the ball game. Indiana down six. Here's Todd Leary across the timeline against Dugan Fife. Leary drives it right, gives it to Brian Evans. Evans outside to Steve Hart, to Todd Leary right wing. Todd looking low, can't find Henderson. Back to Damon. Down to Brian Evans. He fakes, turns, inside, fires it up short. Rebound comes off to Ray Jackson. Down the floor to Jimmy King. King tries to take it in, puts it up, and got it in a foul. It's going to be called, I believe, on Bailey. Jimmy King will get the two-pointer. That will be his 12th point of the game and a three-point play coming here for Jimmy King. And Tom Rucker didn't gain any friends in this audience. But well, wait a second. The shot. Okay, that's what happened. King gets the two-pointer. But he is also called for the foul, so that is his third personal foul. The basket does count. 39-31, an eight-point Michigan lead again, however. Here's Leary, left side bouncer to Henderson, long jump shot, Allen misses, rebound, out of bounds to Indiana. Off of Jimmy King's hand. Henderson hasn't shot many jumpers in the game, but he flew that one from long range. Todd Leary will inbound for IU. Todd looks. Fires backcourt to Steve Hart. Hart now. Goes back to Leary on the right wing. Todd turns around. Clears it out to Brian Evans. He drives back to Leary. In the corner. Three try. No good. Rebound. Fought four. And Juwan Howard's got it for Michigan. Up court to Jimmy King. Down the floor. The Wolverines on the attack. Leading by eight. Here's the pass thrown away. Damon Bailey on a break. Two on one. Bailey puts it up. No good. But he is fouled. Damon will go to the line for a pair. Let's see who they call the foul on. It's Ray Jackson. And Jackson's got his second personal. So Damon Bailey, who has six points to his credit, two of three from the line today, will go to the stripe for IU. 18-34, just underway on the second half of play. Michigan, with a three-point halftime lead, suddenly takes it to eight, and Bailey will try to cut it to six here. Bailey, two of three, as we said in the first half of play. Damon eyes the first attempt. It's in the air, and it is no good. So Bailey has missed his last two, and we'll have one more attempt coming here, trying to cut the lead to seven. Indiana's found nothing easy from a shooting standpoint today, except from the line, 13 of 15 in the first half. That one drops. Seven points now for Damon, and it's 39-32. Seven-point Michigan lead. Fife to Jackson in backcourt. Down low to Howard. Turnaround jumper is no good. Rebound batted away to Steve Hart. Hart brings it back up the floor. 
Across the timeline in backcourt. Goes to Damon. Left wing. Three on the way. Damon misses short. Rebound battered away. And Brian Evans trying to save it. And Dugan Fife is going to be called for a foul. Dugan Fife picks up his third. And suddenly Michigan has found themselves in a little bit of foul trouble as Fife has three. Jimmy King has three. And they are not a deep bench. Brian Evans inbounds to Steve Hart. Hart. Backcourt. Slides it left. Now looks at right, gives it off to Damon Bailey. Bailey circles back the other way. Here's Hart driving baseline, puts it up and in. Nice move by Steve Hart for his first two points of the ball game. It's 39-34. Jalen Rose the other way outside the fight. To Jackson, the king of the right side of the circle. Back to Rose. Rose fakes, drives down low, fires it up, missed the shot. Rebound, Allen Henderson. Down to Steve Hart. Hart slows it up in backcourt to Leary. Larry holds top of the key. Todd takes it left side, spins back, and a whistle. What do we got? Foul call away from the ball against perhaps Rose or Jackson. It's on Jackson. Jackson picks up number three. That one away from the ball. And four team fouls on Michigan already in the second half. Damon Bailey will inbound. Damon gets it to Leary. He fires the jump shot quickly, and he got it. Todd Leary scores his first pass of the ball game. 39-36, the lead cut back down to three again. Indiana fans roaring their approval. Here is King in backcourt. King backs it out, goes left side to Crawford. Bobby Crawford in, gives it to Jalen Rose. He spins on Leary, fires it no good, and the rebound to Allen Henderson. To Damon Bailey. Bailey crosses the timeline to Leary. Leary, tramp penetrate, brings it back out to Henderson. Henderson fires a 14-footer, scores! Henderson's 11th point, his first field goal. And Indiana's within one, 39-38. Here's Jimmy King, right wing to Jackson, backcourt to Crawford. Down into Juwan Howard. Howard, cross courts to Jalen Rose. He drives baseline, threw it away. Picked up by Jackson. Jackson drives, and Steve Hart blocks it away. Hart goes the other way to Brian Evans. Puts it up inside and it's hammered out of bounds and it belong to IU. So Indiana will have it. Here comes Leon Derricks into the game for Michigan now with 16.34 to go in this final half. And out goes Ray Jackson who has three fouls. Indiana's as close now as they've been since the game started. Damon Bailey will inbound. Bailey gets it into Bryan. Evans on the baseline, spins down the lane. He goes, lost the handle, picked up in there by Henderson. He fights, fires it up, and missed it. Tips it up and in. Henderson, his 13th point and a big tip in. And Indiana leads by 140 to 39. Now, the other way, Michigan. Bobby Crawford inside to Juwan Howard. Back to Crawford. He fires it inside, knocked away, picked off by Howard. Howard brings it back out. He clears it away to Crawford. Crawford inside. Oh, an easy layup for Leon Derricks. Derricks gets his first two points of the ball game, and Michigan takes the lead back by a point, 41 40. Now, Todd Leary, right side, down into Damon. Damon spins in the lane, puts it up, and scores! Damon Bailey with a huge bucket, his ninth point, and Indiana leads it again. Now Derrick's the other way left, inside to Howard. He turns inside, drives across the baseline, threw it out of away, and Jalen Rose retrieves it. Almost threw it out of bounds. Jalen Rose in backcourt, passes it left side to Crawford. Crawford turns, clears out to Jawan Howard from 18 feet. It is good. Jawan Howard's first basket of the second half. He's got 10 points, and it's 43-42, and Michigan leads by one. Todd Leary, left side to Henderson. Allen on the wing, gets it inside to Damon, puts it up, missed the shot. Got his own rebound, fakes, puts it up against, and hits it! Damon Bailey, his 11th point. 44-43, IU by one. Crawford in backcourt for Michigan. As they trade buckets now. Derricks to King on the right wing. King, drives baseline, pulls up and a foul on Bailey. Damon Bailey will be called for a reach in, that'll be his second personal. And timeout is being called with the score. Indiana 44, Michigan 43. We have 14.51 to go in this final half of play. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. 
Watson Construction Company knows you've had a hard time finding someone to service your electrical and mechanical items. That's why Watson Construction has stepped forward to offer you what you want, service and installation on anything you need. Watson Construction even does drain cleaning and pipe fine. If you need something serviced quickly, you should call Watson Construction for 24-hour emergency service. The only service contractor you'll ever need, Watson Construction at 564-4228. The biggest movies at the box office this week are at Video Stop, the video superstore across from Hardy's in Monticello. This week you can pick up one of 20 copies of the thriller The Firm, starring Tom Cruise and Gene Hackman, or choose from other blockbusters like Dave, Sleepless in Seattle, or pick from thousands of other movies. That's Video Stop, 129 North Main, across from Hardy's. Video Stop, because you love to rent movies. Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall, where Indiana has taken the lead by 144-43, 14.51 to go in this final half of play. Well, if you're looking for the best deal in a new car or truck, check out your Central Indiana Dodge dealer, a proud sponsor of Indiana basketball. We know how to help. Well, Indiana was shot only 32% in that first half. Has come out red hot here in the second half. After missing their first three shots, they're now 6 of 10 for 45% of this half. And rebounding, they have now out-rebounded Michigan by a 30-22 to 22 margin, 7-3 to 3 in this half with Allen Henderson with 12 rebounds already in this basketball game. And that certainly has made a significant difference. Indiana can still continues to turn it over, however. They've turned it over a total of 13 times in this game. Uh, Henderson and Bailey both have come back with two field goals each in the second half, and then Todd Leary and Steve Hart had added one apiece. So the Indiana ball club hitting better from the field, although not spectacularly well, but they are drawing fouls as well, Max, and that hurts Michigan. Certainly does. Indiana's got to hit them this half. So far, Bailey is one for two, but uh, they've got to make those shots if they get the foul shot. Michigan will have the basketball with 14.51 to go and trailing it by one point. And Jalen Rose will trigger the inbounds pass for the Wolverines. Derricks, Howard, King, and Crawford, the other Michigan players. Sharon Wilkerson has checked in for IU as Damon Bailey sits down. The inbound comes to Derricks. Turnaround shot, no good. Rebound, Jawan Howard. Almost taken away from him. Howard clears it out to Crawford. To Howard again on the left side. Cross-court pass goes to King. He fires a three. Misses the shot. Rebound, Rose inside. He had it blocked by Steve Hart. Here comes Larry the other way. Larry. There's it to Brian Evans. Evans to Sharon Wilkerson. A three try is no good. Rebound tipped up, knocked away, and pulled out of there by Michigan. So the Wolverines on the attack one more time. Jimmy King to Jawan Howard to Bobby Crawford for a three, and it's no good. The rebound to Jawan Howard lower. Back out to Rose. Jalen Rose looks inside. Rose to the baseline, cut off, fires the jumper, missed the shot, rebound, Derricks back up and no good, and Brian Evans clears the board. Now to Todd Leary. Leary slows in backcourt. Todd spins to the left side, top of the key, moves it to the left wing now, stops and gives outside to Wilkerson. Wilkerson holds, looks it down inside, and then backs it out on the dribble. Sharon goes back to Leary. Leary down on the baseline, it goes to Hart. Hart lost the handle, got it back, and brings it back outside to set it up. Steve Hart, seven seconds on the shot clock, pulls up for a 12-footer, missed it badly, tip up to Henderson, puts it up, and he's fouled. <laughs> Allen Henderson with another big rebound. And he gets fouled as he took it back up to shoot it. And Indiana will go to the line as Allen Henderson, who was 9 out of 10 from the stripe in the first half, has added two field goals in the second half for 13 points. And that foul there was called on Jawan Howard, his third of the ball game, and he goes to the sideline for a rest. Allen Henderson now with 13 rebounds in this basketball game. Henderson at the line as Bailey comes back in. Sharon Wilkerson will sit down. Henderson at the stripe with 13. And he has played himself a whale of a ball game thus far. Two free throws coming. First one is in the air, and it is around, and it gets the shooter's roll. It drops through. 14 points now for Henderson. He'll have one more shot at the line. Indiana leads by two. Henderson tries to make it three. That would be Indiana's biggest lead of the ball game. As he fires it up, it is good. 
15 points for Allen Henderson. And Indiana has a three-point lead, their largest. King in backcourt to Derricks, now to Crawford. Crawford looks in backcourt for Rose, finds him top of the key. He fakes, drives inside, pulls up a whistle. And they're going to call a foul against IU. And they're going to count the basket. Bob Knight can't believe it. And I think they're going to nail the personal on Allen Henderson. That would be his second of the ball game. So Jalen Rose gets his seventh point and a chance at a three-point play that could tie the ball game at 46 if he hits it. Robert Knight is not a happy man about that lack or the foul call there. Rose, one more shot coming. Eyes it and didn't get it. The ball batted away, and Damon Bailey tries to save it. He does. He knocks it off of Derrick out of bounds. Good play by Damon Bailey. So Rose misses the free throw. Indiana's got the ball and the lead by one, 46-45. Steve Hart brings it up. Hart across the timeline. Steve backcourt to Todd Leary. Leary to Bailey baseline. Jump shot in the air. Good. Bailey's got 13 now. 48-45 Indiana. Backcourt, Jalen Rose gives to Derricks. Left side to Jimmy King. King on the wing outside to Crawford. He fires up a three. No good. And the rebound to Allen Henderson. He clears to Bailey. Up the floor to Todd Leary. Takes it inside. Pulls it up. Good! Leary has four. And it's 50 to 45. Indiana by five. Crawford. Outside to King. To Rose. Rose tries a three. It is no good. Rebound. Batted away to Maktar Njai for Michigan. Njai to Crawford for another three. He misses. Rebound. Allen Henderson again is 15th board of the game. Now, Leary throws it away. Jalen Rose steals, and now we got a foul call on Allen Henderson. Henderson nailed on a reach in. And on Allen, his third foul of the ball game. They can't afford to lose him. 12-10 to go. Michigan gets the basketball. Four team fouls now called against Indiana in the second half. 12-10 to go on this one. Indiana leads by five. Up the floor, Dugan Fife. Fife across the timeline, takes it right to Jackson. Jackson turns and backcourt to Njai. He fires a long jump shot and got it. Njai scores his first basket of the ball game. And he's got his first two. It's 50 to 47. Here's Steve Hart. Backcourt to Leary. Todd looks back to Steve Hart. Hart looks slow. He'll dribble it right. Looking for Bailey. Can't find him. Goes inside to Brian Evans. The ball kicked back out. We got a foul call against Michigan. And Inzai will be nailed on it. That's his third foul. And timeout being called with Indiana on top. 50 to 47. 11.40 to go in this one. We'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. Insurance fraud is a serious problem, costing policyholders and their companies more than $18 billion last year. It involves everything from staged accidents to arson to false medical claims. State Farm has long been a leader in the fight against fraud, and now we're stepping up the attack by working with law enforcement agencies to help prosecute these criminals. Because when they get away with fraud, everyone pays. This message brought to you by State Farm and your local State Farm agents. Assembly Hall crowd going crazy as Indiana has come back here in the second half to take a lead. They currently have a three-point advantage over Michigan, 50 to 47, with 11:40 to play. And our ball game is brought to you in part by State Farm Insurance and the more than 500 State Farm agents throughout Indiana for all your family insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Well, Indiana this half, 8 of 18, 44% for the game now. They're 37%. Wolverine 6 of 19 this half, 32%. 20 of 55 for 36% for the game. Here in the second half, Steve Art's got two rebounds and two blocks already. Leary a couple of baskets and two assists. Allen Henderson has got six rebounds here in the second half alone to go with those nine he had in the first half for a total of 15 for the game as he is absolutely dominating the board. Well, fans, play the two newest instant games from the Hoosier Lottery. With Instant 21, you can win $2,000 instantly by beating the dealer score. And with 7 come 11, you can win $3,000 instantly by having a lucky roll of the dice. On each game, there are four chances to win on every ticket, so don't miss your chance to win up to $3,000 instantly with the Hoosier Lottery. Let's see who comes back in for Michigan. Juwan Howard checks into the lineup once again along with Ray Jackson, Dugan Fife, Jalen Rose, and Maktar Injai. Indiana has Bailey, Evans, Leary, Henderson, and Hart. Now, inbounding will be Damon Bailey. Indiana leads by three. Bailey looks, bounces into Leary. He fakes, then fires the jump shot. Scores! Todd Leary, his sixth point. 52-47, and has he been a spark here in the second half? Now, Dugan Fife. Backcourt dribble. Fife takes it toward the right side. Looks, gets it right wing to Jalen Rose. He turns on Hart. Back inside, almost threw it away. Howard came up with it. Jawan Howard looks. Down low to Maktar Injai. Injai brings it out on the wing. Bats past the fight. Fife backs it out on the dribble. Slides it back. Then drives it right. Pulls up in the corner. Fires the shot. No good. And they call him for a foul. Fife, I believe, is called for the offensive foul. He reached around Todd Leary and picks up his fourth. No, hold on. They're going to call it on Injai. So Injai is called for the foul. Injai called for the foul. That is his fourth of the ball game. So Injai is the first player with four in this contest nine turnovers now against Michigan in this game. Injai will sit out. Jimmy King comes in. 11.03 to go. Indiana leads 5-5. Brian Evans will try to take it up to 6 and 7. Evans had nine first half points. He was 2 for 2 from the line and now he's 3 for 3. 10 points for Brian. His first point of the second half. Evans hitting 73% from the line this season. Coming into today, hitting 11.2 points a game, and Bryant's second toss, also good. The 11 for Evans, Indiana's biggest lead, 54-47. Seven-point advantage. Jackson backcourt. Fakes down low to Howard, outside the King. Three-point try is no good. Rebound, Jalen Rose. Rose on the offensive board, puts it back up and missed it. Rebound, Jackson. He lost the handle, but they're going to call a foul. Brian Evans may have been nailed on it. Evans called for the personal. And Brian, his third. So Evans now picks up three. Ball belongs to Michigan out of bounds. 10.48 left. It'll be Jimmy King to inbound. Gets it into Jackson. Jackson out the rose. 10 foot jump shot, missed it. Rebound, Brian Evans for Indiana. Evans clears to Damon Bailey. Rose has had an off day from the field. Here is Bailey backcourt to Leary. Leary. Looks right side. Stops. Looks for help. Finally gives it off to Damon. Damon takes it to the left wing. Down to the baseline. Cut off. Brings it out to Henderson. Allen cross courts to Brian. Evans back out to Leary. Leary fakes it one way. Turns on Fife. Drives it down low. Tears it outside to Brian Evans. Evans dribbles it left to Hart on the baseline. Drives in. Takes it to Henderson. Puts it up. Lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Shot clock is at six seconds. Indiana. Has to recognize that fact. Damon Bailey will inbound. Leary holding up six fingers. Bailey looks. Having trouble. Then gets it into Hart. Drives in. Scoops it up. And got it. Hart got the roll. Steve's fourth one of the game. Here is Rose the other way. 56-47. Suddenly Indiana by nine. Jimmy King on the right wing. Outside to Jackson. Jackson lets fly a 17-footer. No good. Rebound pulled out of there again long to Jimmy King. 
Now inside to Howard. Jawan turns around, lost the handle, but a reach-in foul called against Damon Bailey. Bailey trying to play help side defense, picks up personal foul number three. 9.49 to go. That is team foul six against IU, and the ball will go to the free throw line. Jawan Howard will shoot two. Three-point range today. Michigan is now one of 16. Howard has 10 points in the game. His first free tries of this contest. He's a 67% shooter from the line, and he misses. He'll have one more coming. As a team, Michigan is hitting 676 from the stripe this year. That is not real good. Howard's second toss. No good again, but a tip in by Ray Jackson. Great offensive board by Jackson for the rebound tap, and it's 11 for Jackson, and it's 56-49. Indiana's lead cut to seven. Now Bailey backcourt to Leary. Time. Down to the corner to Bryan. Evans on the baseline. Tried to get a shot off and couldn't quite catch his footing. Here's Leary spinning on five. Spins down in the lane. Pulls out to Damon Bailey. Bailey in low to Henderson. Turns on Howard. Turns, looks, puts it up, whistle. Foul on the floor. And let's see on who. It's going to go on uh, Dugan Fife. That will be his fourth. So Fife gets his fourth. That's the second Michigan player to pick up four. Michigan substitutions now. Bobby Crawford's going to come back in. And also in Olivier St. John into the game now for Michigan. So Fife and Rose will sit down. Michigan really double teaming and Henderson when he gets the ball in there. They're putting a guard in front of him, one in back of him, and they're causing him some problems, but they're also fouling him. Henderson with 15 points in the game. He's been sensational from the stripe so far today. He needs to keep it up. First shot in the air. Good. 16 now for Allen. In the first half, he hit eight out of nine, or make it nine out of 10. In the second half, he's now three of three. And he has one more shot coming. Flies it up, and no good this time, and the rebound comes out to Jimmy King. Michigan on the attack. 57-49, Indiana, Jackson inside. Off to Howard, jump shot, got the roll. Joan Howard has his 12 point. IU fans thought there was a travel there, but no call. 57-51, Michigan within six. Damon Bailey fires and got it! Damon Bailey's got 15. At a 17-footer, 59-51. Inside pass to Howard, a jump hook this time, no good, and Brian Evans clears the board. Gets it out to Leary. Leary across the timeline. Inside to Bailey, back out to Leary, to Brian Evans. Evans brings it back to Steve Hart. Hart right side to Leary. Inside to Damon. Puts it up and couldn't get the roll. Ray Jackson will get nailed in the foul, however, and that'll be his fourth. So Jackson picks up number four. Damon Bailey will go to the line for a pair. That is the third player now for Michigan to pick up his fourth personal. Njai has four. Jackson has four. And Fife has four. Jawan Howard has three, and Damon Bailey is going to go to the free throw line, shooting a pair. Indiana's lead at eight, and Damon could take it up to ten the first time the Hoosiers would have led by double figures. Damon today, eight rebounds, three assists, five steals to go with his shooting. In this second half, he's got four baskets out of seven shots. Bailey's first attempt is good. Damon now with 16 points. He has come alive in the second half. 82% free throw shooter. In the first half, he was two out of three. He missed his first of the second half, and now he misses that one. He has missed two here in the second half. 60-51, the lead at nine. Here is Howard. Jawan Howard backcourt to Jimmy King. King had a very big first half and a very quiet second so far. Crawford outside to St. John. Back to Crawford on the right wing. Lobs it low, ball batted away. Picked up by Todd Leary. Indiana comes up with a steal to Steve Hart. Hart looks inside, brings it back out, cross courts to Leary. Leary a three try, no good. Rebound, knocked away. Damon inside to Hart. Hart works, kicks it back up, no but a foul. The Hoosiers working the boards too. 
Damon Bailey will sit down for a rest. Uh, the, both the trainer, Tim Garrow, immediately over. I think he's getting cramps again, Max. Should be. He's really, uh, I think he was kind of struggling at first half with that thigh bruise. He, he just not full goal, but here in the second half, it may hurt, but he's going, and they are working on the calf of his leg right now. Fife and Rose are both checking back in for Michigan now. Out go Crawford and St. John. Steve Hart will go to the free throw line with four points. He's a 71% shooter from the line. Indiana leads by nine with 8.02 left. The free one is up and it's short. And suddenly Indiana is starting to struggle from the strike. Sharon Wilkerson is back in there for IU. He's the guy replacing Bailey. Hart's second attempt he is good. Steve Hart's got five. The Hoosiers with their biggest lead at 10. 61 51, eight minutes left. Jackson the other way for Michigan. Jackson the fight. He flies a three. It's no good. Almost an air ball. That away. Brian Evans tries to steal. He hits the deck. And a foul call on Michigan. Jalen Rose gets nailed on the foul. That will be his second of the ball game. Indiana will get the basketball. And going to the line will be Brian Evans. Boy, every time an Indiana player hits the deck, Max, you, Max, you start to hold in your breath a little bit, especially when it's Evans or Leary. That's right. Evans has got 11 rebounds now. Henderson with 15. Bailey with 8. Both of these guys really working the boards out there. Indiana is now 20, uh, uh, 21 of 27 free throws. Brian Evans to the line as Tim Garl and Craig Hartman continually work on Damon Bailey's calves over there. He's got cramps. And... Brian Evans cans the free one. He's got 12 points now. He'll have one more shot coming. 62-51, the Hoosiers' biggest lead of the game at 11 as Evans will try to make it 12. And he does not. The rebound comes off to Ray Jackson. Michigan basketball. Here's Fife the other way. Outside to Jackson. He flies a jump shot. It's no good. Rebound inside to Rose. Puts it back up and scores. Jalen Rose, ninth point. That's 62-53, a nine-point Indiana lead. Leary to Brian Evans. Back out to Todd. Leary drives the left wing, gives a load to Evans, drives the baseline, back out to Leary. Leary on the wing, circles the backcourt, takes it in, fires a jump shot, off the glass, no, rebound, pulled away, and picked out of there by, oh, stolen by Indiana. Here's Sarana Henderson, thunder! 18 for Henderson. The mad scramble pays off for IU. Down low, Rose the other way. Jalen Rose inside for block shot by Henderson. Off to Steve Hart. Hart takes it inside, gives it off to Sharon. Outside to Hart, inside to Evans. Shot in the air, good! Brian Evans, 14 points. Indiana leads 66-53. 6.43 to go. Dugan fights on the dribble. Right side to Howard, or Jackson rather. Ray Jackson and a whistle away from the ball. A foul called against Indiana. It's on, I think, Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson picks up personal foul number two. I think he got baited by Jalen Rose. And Rose will go to the line. 6.34 left. Here comes Bailey back in. Damon will check back into the lineup. Wilkerson will go out. Indiana leads by 13. And we have 6.34 to go in this one. Rose, who has nine points at the line. Jalen Rose at the stripe. Flies the free one. It is good. Rose has his 10th point. He'll have an opportunity for one more. Indiana leads by 12. And Rose will try to cut it to 11. Know, of course, that Michigan has had some great comeback efforts in their last couple of ball games. Rose cans this one. He's got 11. Timeout is called with a score. Indiana 66, Michigan 55. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Get your Beaver Dam Free Press. Get your Beaver Dam Free Press. Includes a beaver damn in menu. Well, you're a cute little fella, aren't you? Oh, what you got on your little menu there, Wood? <laughs> oh, you're very funny. 
It has prime rib, lobster, steak, along with salads, yeah. appetizers, and sandwiches. Sounds like one of the mayor's snobby places. Shirt and tie place, you know, garçon. No, the Beaver Dam Inn has elegant food at casual prices, and I don't think you own a tie, Harv. How'd you know my name? It's on your belt buckle. Oh. The Beaver Dam Inn. Elegant food at casual prices. 1200 Francis Street in Monticello. And boys, don't forget about Touch of Class Catering. They're available for all your catering needs, whether it be for holidays, anniversaries, birthdays, or just getting together with friends. And on Sunday and Monday, the Beaver Dam Inn is available for your parties. Now don't forget, that's the Beaver Dam Inn and Touch of Class Catering, located at 1200 Francis Street in Monticello. Indiana leads Michigan 66-55 with 6.34 to go in the basketball game. Well, at minus, our inspections are free. In addition to complete exhaust work, they do foreign and domestic car and truck brakes. Stop in or call your local Midas shop for an appointment. Try the Midas way, the way it should be. During the last uh, 14 minutes of play, that's from the 5.55 mark of the first half when the University of Michigan led Indiana by 15, 34 to 19. Indiana has outscored Michigan 47 to 21. Evans with 11 rebounds, Bailey with nine, re nine rebounds, all career highs. This half, Indiana 13 of 25, 52%. They've held the Wolves to nine of 30 for 30%. Well, IU basketball games are being brought to over a statewide network of radio stations from Learfield Sports, numbering over 50 strong, including WWJY and Crown Point, WQFE in Brownsburg, WFLQ in French Lick, and WBNL in Boonville. We're extremely proud to have these stations as a part of this year's IU network. Hope you're enjoying today's broadcast. Well, if you're an IU fan, it's hard not to have enjoyed the second half so far. Indiana was down by 11 at one point in this ball game and have come back a 13 actually where they were down 15 sorry 15 points down at one point and have come back trailing by three at halftime michigan took it back up to, i believe nine and now the hoosiers lead it by 11 and they've led by as many as 13. full court pressure in the inbound but the hoosiers break the press damon bailey will bring it up bailey across the timeline to todd leary in backcourt leary goes to damon on the right side of the circle damon looks inside Brings it back out, gives it off to Bryant Evans. Evans now looks it left, spins, turns right, looking for help now. Clears it off to Steve Hart. Hart, back out he comes, on the dribble right, almost lost it, got it back, clears to Todd Leary. Shot box at four. Leary, down right side, a whistle, and a foul called against IU. Damon Bailey is called for using his forearms as he picks up personal foul number four. So Bailey has picked up four personal fouls now. And going to the free throw line for the rest of this ball game for two shots will be the Michigan Wolverines. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a one and one it should be. That's the eighth team foul against IU. I was looking at Michigan. They have ten team fouls. One and one for Dugan Fife. He fires the free one. No good. And the rebound comes off to Henderson. So Indiana gets the basketball. Now Bailey with four fouls has got to be careful. Todd Leary, backcourt. Looks at right side, backs it back out. Indiana still leads by 11. Todd takes it right wing, brings it back, spins back to the right again. Down baseline he goes. Cut off, lost the handle. We got a whistle. We got a foul call on Dugan Fife, and that's it for him. Dugan Fife will go to the sideline with five as he completes his day's work with five points all in the first half. So Dugan Fife sits down, and the Hoosiers, Todd Leary, will go to the free throw line, and he will have two shots covered. Leary coming back for his first ball game since December the 28th, hitting 78% of his free tosses. He has six points in this game, all on three two-point field goals. And Todd shooting three ones here. The first is up and in. Seven points now for Todd Leary. 67-55, the Indiana lead at 12, and Leary will try to take it back up to their largest margin of 13 with a number two shot going. Eight points for Leary, and Indiana leads 13, 68 to 55. Here comes Jalen Rose across the timeline, Rose in backcourt, bounces it off to Jimmy King on the left side. King out front to Jackson, right side to Crawford. 
Crawford holds and clears it back to King. King drives left, pulls up, fakes, bounces low inside, ball batted away, but King's got it. King back out to Crawford. Crawford to Jawan Howard. Down low to Jalen Rose. Got it back. Spins, turns, fires, and hit it. Jalen Rose has got 13. 68-57, the lead at 11 for IU. 5.05 left. Leary across the timeline in the backcourt dribble. Todd spins it right, comes back to the right side, almost lost it, and Bobby Crawford's gone for a foul. Bobby Crawford picks up a personal, and that'll send Leary to the line once again. Todd will have two more shots coming. And with 4.57 to go, he can take the lead right back up to 13. Indiana this game, 24 of 31 from the field, 11 of 16 this half. Michigan has shot only 15, so Indiana once again has hit more than Michigan has shot. That's been the plan, and Leary goes to the line. Two shots coming. Todd Leary, with eight points in the game, now has nine. The lead goes back up to 12 at 69-57. Todd averaging 6.6 a ball game this year and has 13 as a season high. Looking for his 10th, and he got it. Leary with 10 points, 70-57. to Across the timeline, Jalen Rose in backcourt. Off to Jackson. Jackson looks on the dribble now. Gives to Jimmy King. King back out to Juwan Howard for a three try. And he missed it. Off the rim. Rebound back out of there by Brian Evans. Evans clears to Leary. Leary across the timeline against Crawford. Leary spins to the right. Gives it to Brian Evans. Evans looks down low. Can't find Bailey. Comes out to Hart. Steve gives to Damon. Damon on the wing drive right. Bounces into Leary. Reverse layup is no good. Tip up is good. But a foul. It won't count. Ryan Evans gets nailed on his fourth personal foul. So Evans and Bailey now have four personals each. Pat Graham is going to check in for IU. And again, Damon Bailey goes to the sideline with cramp problems. Also, while he was over there, they had him the last time, in addition to working on that uh, leg, they got him breathing into a plastic bag, trying to get some uh, oxygen in there or take care of the problems he's having with uh, that leg cramp. And going to the line is Bobby Crawford, 61% his free throw percentage on the season. He has not scored in this ball game. The Hoosiers lead by 13. That's been their largest margin. 4.21 to go. Crawford misses. Rebound. Brian Evans takes it out of there for IU. There's the Pat Graham. Graham seeing his first action of the second half to Leary. Across the timeline, Todd has it ripped from behind, and Jalen Rose is called for the foul. Rose picks up his third personal. Todd Leary will go to the stripe. Alan Henderson comes over and asks him if he's all right, and he says he is. 4-12 remaining. I'll tell you what, Max, Todd Leary has played here, this being his fifth year, and now timeout being called by Michigan. We'll get to that comment here in a moment. IU, 70. Michigan, 57. 4-12 to go. We'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. One has 12 legs and loves the wide open spaces. Your family, your associates, and your friends. That's why there's Dodge Spirit. Not only can it seat six comfortably, it comes with air, a stereo, and more. Plus, you can get $1,000 cash back. Dodge Spirit fits 12 legs for under 12 7 See it at your nearest Dodge dealer today. MSRP with $1,000 cash back with mentioned items. Excludes tax and destination fee. Check. way to get your car repaired. It's called the Midas way. They properly diagnose the problem so the work is done right the first time. They fix only what needs to be fixed, give you their exclusive inspection, and thoroughly explain your options. They honor your Midas warranty without hassle. They prove that a car repair company can be professional, responsive, and caring. So see your Central Indiana Midas shops for that different way to get your car repaired. The Midas way. That's the way it should be. Here at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Don Fisher along with Max Gerben. We are down to the four-minute, 12-second mark of this basketball game with Indiana leading Michigan 70-57. to And the Hoosiers right now dominating the ball game with free throw shooting. You know, when you plan to travel, consider the intelligent alternatives of Ace Rent-A-Car. Whether you drive, fly, or buy, Ace located at 5700 West Washington Street. 
Here in this basketball game, Evans with 13 rebounds, Allen with 16, and Damon Bailey with 9. That's 38 rebounds. That's two more than the Michigan basketball team has right now. Indiana out-rebounding them as a team, 44 to 36, but those three guys have 38 of the 44 rebounds. Indiana shooting now 50% in this half on 13 of 26. The Wolverines 10 of 32, just 31%. For the game, Michigan with 35% shooting, Indiana with 41% shooting, and Todd Leary, who's like money in the bank, he's 18 of 22 this season from the foul line, goes back up there for another couple of shots. The Hoosiers trying to take their largest lead of the ball game as Leary will be at the free throw line. Jackson, King, Rose, Howard, and Crawford, the lineup now for Michigan. Todd Leary at the free throw stripe. The Hoosiers up 13 and Leary with 10 points to his credit trying to add two more would give Indiana its biggest lead of the ball game at 15 the first is in the air and he got it to rattle home Leary now with 11 great to have him back in the lineup we were trying to get to a point about him him being a fifth year senior Kansas second his 12th point of the game he used to be out of control a lot, but boy, as he settled down and he is playing some great basketball for IU. Here's Michigan on the attack. Indiana's biggest lead. Here's Crawford on the dribble in backcourt for the Wolverines to Ray Jackson. Jackson drives, fires up a 12-footer, got it. Ray Jackson scores his 13th point. Full court pressure by Michigan. Pat Graham now slows it down, gives to Todd Leary. 72-59, Leary backcourt spins against Crawford. Works it back to the right side. Leary brings it out to Brian Evans. He gives it back to Leary. Todd now takes it left to Steve Hart. Hart brings it back outside. Steve goes to Leary. Indiana's working clock now. Three and a half minutes left. Off to Pat Graham. Down inside to Hart. He turns, fires it out to Leary for a three. It is no good, and the rebound comes off to Howard. Back the other way to Jimmy King. King on the right side of the circle. Slows up, gives to Juwan Howard. Back off to King. King goes left, gives it to Bobby Crawford to Ray Jackson. Jackson outside, clears it away to Jalen Rose for a three try. Got it. Jalen Rose has got 16, and here comes Michigan. They're down just 10. 72 62. 256 left. Steve Hart jumps at the Todd Leary. Indiana's got to carry or handle the ball well now. Leary goes to Brian Evans. Evans baseline drive, pulls up, block shot out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Evans got hammered, no call. And the ball will belong to IU underneath their own hoop. 2.43 to go, Pat Gramble inbound. Pat gets it into Bryan. Evans on the wing left, gets it outside to Steve Hart. Back off to Pat, he fakes the shot, drives it baseline low to Bryan Evans. Evans inside, bounces back to Pat Graham for a three. No good, rebound Henderson. Back inside, and he puts it up and he missed it, but a foul. And Jalen Rose will get nailed at her. That'll be the fourth on Rose. And it'll send Allen Henderson to the free throw line once again. What's his rebound total now, Max? 17. 17 boards for Henderson. He has 18 points, 17 rebounds. And he has been tremendous tonight from the line, or this afternoon, we should say. 18 points for Henderson. He eyes this attempt. It's in the air, and it's no good. Well, he hit nine out of ten of the first half. In this half, he has one, two, three out of five. 2.28 to go. Anderson eyes the attempt. Flips it in the air. This one is good. 19 for Allen. Indiana leads 73-62. Jimmy King for Michigan to Jalen Rose. Rose forces it to King, a three on the way, good. And suddenly Michigan finds its three-point shooting eye. That's 15 points for Jimmy King. That's his second basket of the second half, and timeout is called by Michigan. The lead has been cut 73 to 65, 217 to go. We'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. At First of America Bank, we realize there are two things in life you never have enough of, time and money. Ironically, you spend almost all your time trying to make more money so you have more time. You go round and round, spending more time, making more money, and you never really seem to end up with more of either. But there is a way to get more of both. 
With Loan by Phone from First of America Bank, you can get more money without spending a lot of time. Because when you call 1-800-347-LOAN, you'll talk to a professional lender who can make a decision while you're on the line. You'll get competitive rates and flexible terms. Call First of America Bank today at 1-800-347-LOAN and get more time and more money. Who knows? It could start a whole new trend where you actually end up with enough of both. First of America Bank, a bank for life. Call us at 1-800-347-LOAN for your financial needs and we'll usually give you an answer while you're on the line. Loan by phone from First of America Bank. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Loan subject to credit approval. Well, back once again to the Assembly Hall. We have 73-65 on the scoreboard. Indiana's lead at 8 with 2.17 to go. And Max, by no means, can you count this ball, club, ball game with the win column for IU. Michigan can score in a hurry. Well, they really can. And Indiana can't afford to trade three-point shots for one-point free throws. And that's what they just did on that last exchange. Since the uh, 3.55 mark, or about a minute and a half ago, Michigan has outscored Indiana by a total of 8-1. Uh, to one, And you just can't let that happened. They've cut that 15-point lead down to eight now. Michigan had hit only one out of their first 18 or 17 three-point shots, but having hit two in a row now, they're three of 19 from three-point range. Indiana, which probably won't put up another three-pointer in this game, is two of 16 for just 12%. Obviously, both teams way below what they normally shoot in three-point range. Damon Bailey has returned to the IU lineup, working cramp problems uh, out of his legs and coming back in now. Boy, you can see how red his legs are, Max, from them uh, massaging them, trying to get those cramps or Charlie horses out. Indiana needs him in here in this last two minutes. Brian Evans will inbound the pass. The Hoosiers need to get a possession with a bucket here or free throws. Here's the bouncer into Todd Leary. Leary bounces back to Brian, back to Todd, and he'll bring it across the timeline. Leary in backcourt. Gives it off to Damon. Damon Bailey now against Crawford on the dribble. Takes it to the right side, down to the wing, brings it back out to Leary. Now to Pat Graham. Graham in backcourt on the left side. Graham circles in backcourt. Pat stops, looks for help. Finally clears to Todd Leary. Down he goes inside, scoops out, good! Todd Leary, a 14th one of the game, is season high. 75-65. Indiana by 10. Michigan's Jalen Rose. 1.38 to go. Rose almost lost it. Got it back. Drives in. Bounces the pass to Crawford. A three on the way. Good. Bobby Crawford cans a tray. Crawford has his first tray of the ball game. His first points. Here's Pat Graham. Jumps it off to Damon Bailey. Bailey up court to Allen Henderson. Out to Todd Leary. Leary in backcourt on the dribble. 1.17 to go. Indiana leads 75-68. Here's a bat, whoop, almost a throw away, and Allen Henderson comes up with it. Henderson now. Allen dribbles it. Ah, oh, he lost the ball. Gives it to Jackson. He drives in and is fouled by Allen Henderson. Henderson could have given the ball off on the left side over there to Damon Bailey or Todd Leary. I couldn't tell which it was, but Allen never saw them and tried to fight his way through a double team and lost the handle. That's his fourth foul. And Michigan is down just seven right now with 102 to go. This ball game is nowhere near over. They've hit three three-point shots in a row, and they couldn't buy one up until just a couple of minutes ago. Ray Jackson at the line. He has 13 points, now 14, and Jackson has his 14th point of the game. He's three for three today from the line. He can draw Michigan within five if he hits this one. 102 remaining. Jackson eyes the attempt. Up it goes. Got it. Jackson now has 15. Olivier St. John comes into the ball game for Michigan. And they're going to send Jackson to the sideline. They don't want him to get his fifth foul. 75-70. IU leads by just five now. Brian Evans will inbound. He gets it in to Todd Leary. Back to Brian. Now to Damon Bailey. Damon will bring it up. Bailey spins, jumps it off to Todd Leary. Leary now trying to get it across the timeline. Finally does to Evans, and Evans lost the handle and called timeout or lost the ball. Indiana turns it over. 49 seconds to go, and the Hoosiers turn it over as they struggle with the full-court pressure all of a sudden. Michigan will have it. The fans come to their feet. Bobby Crawford in backcourt. Crawford on the dribble. 
Gives it off to Jalen Rose. Rose cross courts to Crawford. And a whistle, and we got a foul called. Nope, he stepped out of bounds. Crawford stepped back and stepped out of bounds. The Hoosiers get it on a turnover by Michigan. Brian Evans will inbound it. Evans will trigger the inbounds against full court pressure with 41 seconds left on the clock. Indiana leads 75-70. What do we got? Hold on. We'll keep it here. They blew the horn. Phil Bobo was over there talking to the official scorekeeper, a timekeeper, we should say. I think they were asking if maybe there was a jump ball or something. They didn't know whether to change a possession arrow or something. That's all I can see. No, that's not the case. It was uh, Crawford stepping out of bounds is why Indiana got it back. Jim Burr now is saying something to the other official, Tom Rucker. Olivier St. John comes back in and Jalen Rose will sit down. Rose is playing with four fouls, so he goes to the sideline. And again, they are to the score uh, scorekeeper, the timekeeper, and they are talking over there. I don't think that, yeah, he just came out. He can't go back out. He can't come back in. He, where the time had not started, I don't think, for him. So Olivier St. John, I don't know if he checked in or not. Right now they're checking over there with him. Bill Bova. Now the whole Michigan team goes over to talk with head coach Steve Fisher. Or they've been over there for a few moments. Bob Knight is looking down there wondering what in the world is going on here. The Indiana players have huddled up. And Bob Knight gets the answer he wanted from Jim Burr. Steve Fisher doesn't want to send Jalen Rose back in, so he's going to bring in uh, somebody else. He's going to bring in uh, Maktar Njai. Yeah. So Njai is the guy who checks in. St. James just can't come back in until the clock is run off. Five-point Indiana lead with the ball. Brian Evans will inbound. He gets it to Todd Leary, and he is fouled. Bobby Crawford knocks Leary to the court, and Todd will get up and go to the other end. Crawford picks up his second personal of the ball game. 39 seconds remaining, and Leary will have two shots coming. Crawford actually has three fouls now, not two. And Jawan Howard comes to the, or Jalen Rose, I should say, comes back into the game now for Michigan. So Leary will be at the line trying to add two more and a seven-point lead with 39 seconds left. Todd Leary with 14 points today. That's a new season high for him. Two shots coming here. First is in the air. It is going. 15 for Leary. He makes it a six-point ball game, and he'll try to make it seven. To seven. Today's game brought to you in part by Amex Cold Industries, powering your energy needs. Leary fires number two. Got it. 16 for Leary. Indiana by seven. 38 seconds. Michigan on the attack. Jimmy King. Out to Jackson. Jackson drives inside, pulls up. Long shot by Henderson. He lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to Michigan. Good defensive play by Allen. His third block of the ball game. Michigan now. There is some jawing going on. Ray Jackson and Henderson. Jackson's doing most of the jawing. This is a carryover from last year. Remember Henderson's conversation up at Michigan at the end of that game in which Indiana won last year. Well, are we ready? Jackson still joined Henderson. Now we're ready. Jimmy King will inbound. King looks, fires it in, it goes to Crawford inside, puts it up in the left hand and got it. Crawford's got his fifth point. Inbound to Todd Leary. Leary brings it up the court, threw it away. Ba Damon Bailey saves it. Bailey, he'll bring it up and he's fouled by Crawford. Crawford has his fourth foul. 20 seconds to go. Indiana leads by five, 77-72. And Damon Bailey, who has missed a couple of free throws here in the second half, he is two out of four, will go to the free throw line. Bailey with 16 points, 10 of them coming here in the second half of play. 20.2 seconds to go. Damon eyes the first attempt. It is in the air, and it is going. 17 now for Bailey. And the senior from Heltonville has one more cover. That was Indiana's 40th free throw shot in this game. 
Bailey at the line for one more. He can make it a seven-point lead again. He eyes, he flies, and he hits. 18 now for Damon. 79-72. 17 seconds left. Here's Jalen Rose. A long three. No good. Rebound. Brian Evans for IU. Evans clears it out to Pat Graham. Graham is fouled by Jimmy King. Jimmy King is fouled for the foul. And the Hoosier fans are on their feet. With eight seconds to go, they know they want it. Bob Knight will send in Pat Knight. He'll send in Ross Hales. And the Hoosier crowd is loving every second of it as Damon Bailey goes to the sideline. Ross Hales checks in, I believe, for Alan Henderson. And a standing ovation as Henderson goes to the sideline. This crowd has loved the victory over Michigan today. Pat Graham will go to the free throw line. Apparently, a technical foul has been called. Jalen Rose is called for a technical. Pat Graham fires up the first one. He's got his six point. He'll have one more. So Jalen Rose got called for a technical. He sits down. That, of course, is his fifth foul as well. And Pat Graham just canned his free one there. So he's got seven. And Pat Graham will go to the line for two more right here. Pat Graham is working on a string, too. He fires this one up. It is no good. He misses. <laughs> Did I put the kiss on him? I guess so. <laughs> That's all right. Pat with one more shot coming. And he got that one to drop in. He's got eight. The Hoosiers lead at 82-72. And they will have the basketball with eight seconds left. Wyatt Evans will inbound. Gets it into Pat Graham. Pat in backcourt turns around. He can just hold on to it. Four, three, two, one. It's over. And Indiana beats Michigan again this afternoon at the Assembly Hall for the sixth time in seven meetings. Indiana continues its dominance over the Wolverines as they win by 10 here today, coming back from a 15-point deficit in the first half of play, winning it by 10, 82 to 72 here in Wilmington. We'll be back to review today's game in a moment on the Pioneer Seed post-game show. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. Indiana Hoosier Basketball, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Always IU, always Coca-Cola. Your central Indiana Dodge dealers. Hook's Drugstore, more of what a drugstore is for. The Hoosier Lottery, a proud sponsor of Indiana University Basketball. Indiana's Rural Electric Cooperatives, a power partnership providing safe and efficient electric energy to one million Hoosiers. Midas, try the Midas way, the way it should be. Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated and your local Pioneer sales representative, PSI Energy. Call the PSI professional today for ways to save energy and your money. TWA, the most comfortable way to fly. Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. Pursuit Herbicide, the no-till, no-fear leader for soybean weed control. Your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. And by State Farm Insurance and State Farm agents throughout Indiana who support Hoosiers basketball. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A family of four can eat for under $15 at the Treehouse Restaurant. Of course, you know this by now. A family-owned and operated restaurant, the Treehouse is not only inexpensive, but a monosol tradition for over 40 years. Whether it's their homemade soup or delicious tenderloins, you know that it's from the Treehouse. It's got to be good. And don't forget about their favorites like buttered fish and roasted chicken, too. With several meals under $2.99, it's good food fast, not fast food. The Treehouse in Monticello, across from Twin Lakes High School. 35 miles an hour. You get airbags, safer fuel tanks, child restraints. The testing conducted by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, co-founded by State Farm, helped make these and many other safety advances a reality. And State Farm has helped fund a new safety research center for the Institute because we want to help make sure that the only accident you ever have is one you can walk away from. 
This message brought to you by State Farm and your local State Farm agents. So you want a car that's fun. Problem is, your funds are kind of limited. An excellent reason to check out the sporty Dodge Shadow ES. You can get one with air, AM, FM cassette, and unlimited fun. All for a very affordable price. In fact, right now, after $1,000 cash back, you can get one for under ten eight. Dodge Shadow ES. Unlimited fun for limited funds. See your nearest Dodge dealer today. MSRP 24H package after $1,000 cash back. Excludes tax and destination fee. The weather might be cold outside, but the deals are hot at your Snapper dealer. Like the new Snapper Lawn Tractor, sale price from $15.99, or the Snapper Ninja Recycling Mulcher, sale price from $339.99 with no payment till October. If you're counting the day sale spring, start your own warming trend with a hot deal during Snapper's Big Cut National Sales Event with cash discounts and take half off your choice of either a single bag grass catcher or a Ninja Mulching Kit featuring the yet unmatched Ninja Blade. With approved Snap Credit, you don't have to pay a cent until October, interest free. Ask your local Snapper dealer for all the details. There's never been a better time to buy a quality snapper more. Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, where this afternoon Indiana picks up a big win over the Michigan Wolverines. The final today, 82-72, as the Hoosiers increase their Assembly Hall record home winning streak to 37 here today. And of course, more importantly, stand perfect in the Big Ten at 3-0 and move their overall mark to 10-2 and two on the season. Michigan suffering their first Big Ten loss, now at 3-1, and one, and their overall mark stands at 11-3 and three for the year. Let's look at the individual scoring in this ballgame this afternoon. First of all, for the Wolverines, they had four players in double figures today, led by Jalen Rose, who was held below his 21-point average to 16 here this afternoon. Jimmy King had 15, as did Ray Jackson. Jawan Howard had 12, and there was probably the difference in the ball game as Indiana did an excellent job on Howard this afternoon in keeping him in control. Dugan Fife had five, Bobby Crawford had five, Leon Derricks with two, and Maktar Injai with two points. Oliver uh, Olivier St. John, we should say, did not score in his stint during the ball game for Michigan. So the Wolverines with four players in double figures, led by Jalen Rose, who had 16. For Indiana this afternoon, an outstanding performance by a couple of players. First of all, Alan Henderson with a double-double today. He had 19 points and a number of rebounds. He may have almost come close to that number of rebounds as well, but we'll talk more about that momentarily. Henderson with 19 in today's game. Damon Bailey had an 18-point effort here this afternoon. Coming back off of an injury he suffered on December 28th. In his first game back, Todd Leary with a season-high 16. 14 for Brian Evans, who continues to play well since his absence because of an injury. He started back against Iowa last Tuesday night and continued here to play well this afternoon. 14 out of Brian this afternoon. Then Pat Graham had eight today, five points for Steve Hart, and two points for Sharon Wilkerson. Todd Lindemann, Pat Knight, and Richard Mandeville all played briefly, did not score. So Indiana today led by Allen Henderson's 19, Damon Bailey's 18, 16 for Todd Leary and 14 for Brian Evans. Max, a quick look at the team stats. Well, Michigan, which shot very well in the first half, at least early going first half, really cooled off and finished shooting only 38.7 for the game, 29 of 75. Indiana, which at one point late in the first half was hitting only 21% of their shots, finished 40% for the game. They shot 22 of 55. That's after an 8 of 25 first half for 32%. 14 of 30 second half, 46.7. Indiana way off on three-point shooting today, just 2 of 16 for 12%. The Michigan Wolverines, 4 of 22, 18%. They did. They had their uh, only hit only one of their first 18 shots from three-point range, but then they closed in to hit three in a row. From the free throw line, that's where Indiana won the basketball game, hitting on 36 of 45 for 80%. Michigan 10 of 19, 52%.
The Hoosiers again turned it over. Their season average, 17 turnovers in this game. Michigan turned it over 11, but rebounding was the big thing today as Indiana turned, uh, rebounded, out-rebounded Michigan by a 49-39 to 39 margin. And when we come back, we'll talk about some individual rebounding because the three players for Indiana had outstanding days rebounding today. We'll pick the PSI Energy Player of the Game. When we return in a moment, you're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Watson Construction Company knows you've had a hard time finding someone to service your electrical and mechanical items. That's why Watson Construction has stepped forward to offer you what you want, service and installation on anything you need. Watson Construction even does drain cleaning and pipe fine. If you need something serviced quickly, you should call Watson Construction for 24-hour emergency service. The only service contractor you'll ever need, Watson Construction at 564-4228. You're preparing for the future. You're making sure your family is protected and well taken care of. And yet you may be leaving the most serious questions unanswered. Who will take care of your children when you're gone? What will happen to your property and possessions? Who will make these and other important decisions that will have long-lasting effect on your family? You will with the Indiana Will Kit. The Indiana Will Kit is the smart way to prepare your own legal binding will in the privacy of your own home following step-by-step -step instructions. At just $22.95, it's an inexpensive way to avoid the headache of preparing a will with an attorney and a sensible way to avoid the heartache that can occur when your affairs are settled by the courts. Call 1-800-727-5703 to order the Indiana Will Kit. Have your Visa or MasterCard ready. 1-800-727-5703. Order the Indiana Will Kit today. Day. Then get back to the business of making sure your family is protected and well taken care of. Dad, Jimmy's pushing me. Now that's important stuff. Don't let this new year pass without getting the help you need. Literacy Volunteers of White County offers free help with reading and writing. It's confidential, private, and convenient. What's more, it's free. Just tell the Literacy Volunteers why you want to read and write better, and they'll help you reach your goals. Meet with a tutor just two hours a week where and when you both decide. You have nothing to lose and the opportunity to achieve your goals to gain. Call 583-9639. 583-9639. Literacy Volunteers of White County is a United Way agency. Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall where this afternoon Indiana is a winner over Michigan. 82-72, the final as the Hoosiers go to 10-2 and on the season, 3-0 and in the Big Ten. Michigan drops to 11-3 and overall and 3-1 and in the conference. And Max, some statistics today individually. Uh, this basketball team did a great job on the boards. They certainly did, Don. Brian Evans had 15 rebounds today. Allen Henderson had six. Damon Bailey had nine. If you add those up, that's 40 rebounds. The University of Michigan basketball team only had 39 today. You said Alan Henderson had six. He had 16. 16, I'm sorry. 16, 15 for Brian Evans, 9 for Bailey, 40 totally, and that's 40 out of 49, which Indiana had. That was a great afternoon rebounding. Well, certainly uh, some other uh, performances today uh, worth noting. Uh, Todd Leary, of course, came back from an injury on December the 28th, and not his best game of the season, but certainly a gutty effort here this afternoon. And when Bob Knight wanted somebody in there to control things, I thought Todd did a great job. Well, he did from the standpoint of free throw shooting. He was 8 of 8 from the free throw line today after going 4 of 9 from the field. Steve Hart was 2 of 3 this afternoon. Graham, 2 of 6. Damon Bale a little bit off in his shooting. 6 of 15. He had a really tough first half in which he took hit only 2 out of 8 shots. Sharon Wilkerson was one of three. Lindemann missed his only shot. Henderson, three of eight. And Brian Evans was four of ten. One of the things that helped Indiana today was that Jalen Rose, I should say, yeah, Jalen Rose, was six of 21 from the field. And uh, that's uh, way off his percentage. He was just one of four from three-point range. King was only one of five. So they were really off there as their shooting was just 29 of 75 for 38%. Well, neither team shot it very well. There's no question about that. The Hoosiers just 40% of the afternoon. A bit better in the second half with 46.7%. But still, when you look at this ball club, of course, the key is getting to the free throw line. And Indiana did that exceptionally well today as the Hoosiers shot 80% from the stripe and they got to the line 45 times in this ball game. And that's a big difference because Michigan only got there 19 times, but that was part of the game plan. Indiana was going to take it underneath, and they were very successful in doing it. Well, the PSI Energy players of the game today, and we're saying players because it's plural, we're going to name both Alan Henderson and Todd Leary. Leary coming back from the injury with an excellent 16-point effort this afternoon. Alan Henderson with... Eight, eight, make that 19 points and 16 rebounds. A tremendous double-double here today 
for Allen Henderson. He just played exceptionally well throughout. Didn't shoot it all that great from the field, but he only took eight shots. He hit three of those. But from the line today, he was 13 of 16. And again, Leary came back in and, and lended some stability, I think, to a ball club that really matched in the, until the final five minutes of the first half was struggling to find some stability out there. He did. He, I mean, I was just trying to think uh, as the game was going on, what if Indiana had not had Leary back today, they would have been in big trouble. Well, Bailey's double-double today is his 12th of the season now. Henderson's. <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading down. I'm going to say Bailey next. Henderson's double-double was his 12th. Bailey, by scoring 18 points today, moves up to number 11 on the all-time scoring range. Uh, now, moving ahead of Walt Bellamy, who had 1,441 points. Bailey with 18 today is 1,446 points. Well, we'll have comments from assistant coach Norm Ellenberger as our Pioneer Seed postgame show continues in a moment. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. During this cold winter, you can save on quality products from your local participating Napa Auto Parts store. Count on the starting power you need with the Napa Legend 75-month battery. Now just $59.99 with exchange. And Napa's 12-foot-long booster cables with long-reaching, tangle-resistant cables and handy carry bag as low as $9.99. Save on these and other quality parts and accessories you'll need this winter. At Napa, we keep America running. It's a natural fact. Those with a better view of where they're going can best see how to get there. For soybean weed control, that foresight is just as critical. And those who look to end season bottom line performance clearly see the value of going with the best up front. No wonder you've made Pursuit Herbicide the top choice for soybean weed control today. See your Cyanamid Agri Center dealer for Pursuit, a natural leader. And always follow label directions. This is day two. TWA's Comfort Class replaces coach in flight passenger interviews. Well, I travel a lot for business. I go to trade shows to promote our products, and I feel like I have much more room in my seat. And that was my first thought when I sat down. Well, I thought my company had booked me in the wrong part of the airplane. It, it's almost as much room as first class. I'd say it's a coach with a first class atmosphere. Plenty of room in this section to do my daily work. Uh, plenty of room for a laptop and still have the, the tray table in front of you down and, and uh, have lots of knee room and leg space. This is the best uh, coach class that I've ever experienced uh, in our country. And I've flown most of the airlines that exist in the United States. Back once again to the Assembly Hall with this afternoon. Indiana victorious over Michigan, 82 to 72. Norm Ellenberger has always joined us. Uh, what a terrific win here this afternoon, Coach. I'm tired. <laughs> Man, I'm sure you are. And I think there's still a few folks sitting around here. I think everybody's just too tired to walk out to the car. <laughs> they uh, wouldn't it be great to have about four days off to enjoy this one. Unfortunately, you only got one. <laughs> yeah, right. I wish I had an hour off to enjoy. We're we're going to go right after this right into the room and begin work on Purdue so uh, we've got a few hours left here in good old assembly hall tonight. Norm obviously today's ball game a story of two different halves but really in essence a story of a first 15 minutes and then a final 25. Well that, of course uh, it goes without question that they're you know much bigger and much stronger than, than we are and, and in a lot of positions quicker than we are and boy they they uh, they came right out and bellied right up to us and and and, and had us standing and uh, that uh, and then when we stand we throw it away. I uh, I think Max probably alluded to that at halftime with those 14 turnovers because we we were really in bad shape there. Then then uh, I, uh, you know coach just uh, pulled Steve Hart into our little uh, alcove room in there just a second ago and he said if uh, of any if 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 uh, uh, the success of tonight belonged to any one person, uh, he had a great big chunk of it, and uh, because Steve got in and just made stuff happen with his just just hard play and and and, and tough uh, tough attitude, he just he just plays and and uh, uh, he he can you know he can get right in there with the whole thing, and that that kind of got everybody else going. He made a block of a shot and was called for a foul, and I think it was Ray Jackson. I'm not remember, can't remember who from Michigan. I think it was Jackson who went down, and he blocked the shot, but it was called for a foul on it. But I thought that was as important a point in the ball game as any. Well, right along in there, the crowd needed a boost too. You know, 
I mean, it's it's it's, it's cold outside, but and uh, uh, but they didn't pay fifteen bucks to you know to sit around and watch that crap. That's for <laughs> sure. So so he got the got the crowd going, and uh, you know, poor Pat Graham. You know, he he had his he had his uh, bad one tonight. Uh, I've seen him in a zone before, but this was a little different zone than than you've ever seen Pat Graham in. And, and Lindemann, we we had a we thought for almost an hour and a half today on who we were going to start because we wanted to get off to, a, believe it or not, we for an hour and a half from 9.30 to 11 o'clock this morning, we, we were worrying about getting off to a good start and, and who, who should we start, whether we should start Lindemann or not. And uh, as it turned out, he didn't last long either. So, well, we were in bad shape. So Spending long. too much time on it, Norm. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we thought too much. We've got we to gotta, we gotta rethink our think tank. <laughs> A guy who came off the bench today, just like Brian Evans did on Tuesday night at Iowa, was Todd Leary. Well, he was great. You know, he's he's been sitting over there resting for about three weeks. That's what I told him. I said, shoot, you ought to be able to go and really play as you start this game. I said, he said, why, Coach, why? I said, well, you've been resting now. For... <laughs> he didn't. You know, and, he, and geez, he was eight for eight for the free throw line and, and handled the ball. Well, I was, I was yelling, get the ball to Leary, get the ball to Leary, and then the last minute and a half, after he tripped and fell and threw it away, I said, don't throw it to Larry. Don't throw it to Larry. I told him that, and then he says, he says I didn't want it either. <laughs> Alan Henderson today came up with a sensational performance. He didn't hit many field goals. He had three out of eight for the ball game. But he was so important in the first half because he hit his free throws. He has not been a great free throw shooter at Indiana, but this afternoon he was. Every time Alan would catch it, he was just surrounded by the big trees. And, and uh, you know, his, his moves were were kind of neutralized by some big long arms and and uh, uh he was able to draw some fouls and uh his his baskets you know came at that free throw line and then and then boy when we many times when we needed a big rebound uh, he seemed to come up with it yeah. he got 16 of them today. 16 is that right how many did evans get evans, evans had 15. 15. wow fact, well, that's not bad for a one-arm guy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were talking about it uh, he had 15 16 for henderson nine for bailey that's yeah. 40 that's one more than michigan got well, I I think with Evans, I think I think if we were to measure his left arm, it's six inches longer than his right arm, anyhow. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had a sense out there today that Henderson or uh, Bailey or Evans uh-huh. was uh, struggling a bit with that right arm. I didn't notice that in the Iowa game, but maybe it was just my well, imagination. Well, with, with with this game, the the quickness and the strength of, of Michigan, you know, had a lot to do with that. You know, you you need to have uh, all your parts working. You know, if you're going to play against these guys, and and uh, uh, that that does curtail him. There's no doubt about that. There was certainly no question it was a, a very tough ball game from a physical standpoint. And Damon Bailey struggled uh, with some cramps again today in his legs, which we haven't seen since the Kentucky game. You know, in order in order for Damon to play well, the way people gang up on him, uh, he, he must uh, uh, have a lot of cutting and a lot of movement. You know, and when our offense is standing around, he, he just can't do it all himself. Somebody's got to help him get free. And uh, uh, and then and then when we get behind, you know, and, and, and when we're not playing well, well, he's the kind of kid that he is. He's going to shoulder all the responsibility in the world and 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 just go do it. And uh, uh, he uh, boy, he ran out of gas. He hyperventilated and and, uh, uh, and then got cramps. And well, we had to ice him ice him every about every two minutes there in that last portion of the ball game. But boy, he's got he's got all the guts of a burglar, and he'll uh, he really plays. You really need him in that well, last two yeah, minutes. you know, boy. you just he's he's going to cut and, and see he has good strength. You know, you know. Bailey's strong as a bull. Boy, is he strong, and and uh, uh, he can he can do some things that some of the other kids can't. Norm, we uh, obviously don't have much time to rest, and uh, with a ball club a ball game like this today, with only one day's rest in between, uh, that makes it that much more difficult. Well, you know, everybody uh, uh, everybody's got to go play. You know, we we need to win a game like this. You know, if we can't come in here at our house and and win a game like this, uh, uh, you know, you might as well think about the NIT or something. You know, because we we've, we've got to, we've got to come in and win a game like this, and then and then uh, you got to take your show on the road like we did against Iowa and and, and go play there. Uh, one thing you don't don't do is is worry about it and think who's who's hurt and who's tired and who's not. Uh, uh, you know, we got all summer to rest. All right, Norman, congratulations again on a fine win. We'll look forward to Tuesday night. Good enough. Thanks. Norm Mellenberger on our post-game show. We'll be back with final thoughts in tonight's game in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. To the Indianapolis airport can be a harassing experience. Next time you fly, leave your car with a friend, Ace Rent-A-Car. While you're away, Ace will lodge your car in a safe, secure parking area. You and your luggage will be driven directly to your embarking airline. 
Parking fees are moderate, and Ace is open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. We're located just inside 465 and exit 12A at 5700 West Washington Street. Call 243-6363 for details. Ace Valet Parking, the intelligent alternative. How to move to a new house without calling Mayflower. You put the furniture in the truck, close the doors, drive, stop, open the doors, take the furniture out of the truck, and there you are. You're moved. What could possibly go wrong? Next time, call Mayflower. You can't be too careful. Call Advantage Moving and Storage in Indianapolis at 875-1967. Well, what are the first deal? What are the best? The new Mexican. Knowing your family is covered in the event of a medical emergency is one of the reassuring things about belonging to the new MaxiCare. What's even more reassuring, however, is helping to prevent emergencies from ever happening at all. So please, when driving, don't forget to buckle up. Seatbelts do save lives. Indiana Hoosier Basketball, brought to you by Hogan Transfer and Storage in Indianapolis, and by White Castle. Where else can you buy them by the sack but at White Castle? This is a production of the Hoosier Network, a division of Learfield Communications Incorporated. Well, here at the Assembly Hall for the final time today, Indiana winner over Michigan, 82 to 72, as the Hoosiers win their sixth of the last seven meetings between these two ball clubs and ninth of the last 11. Max, that's simply phenomenal when you consider how good Michigan has been over the last few years. It certainly is, Don. It shows that this Indiana basketball program is one that. Uh, just keeps moving along. It is so well established that it's just awfully difficult to handle. And, of course, uh, another win here in Assembly Hall, the 37th, I guess, in a row. Indiana did not shoot well today, but uh, shooting only 40%, but it was good enough to beat Michigan at 38%, and uh, that was a big win. Talking about programs, Don, just let me say, I just met a guy before the game, a guy named Rick Dow, who drove 900 miles from Ottawa, Canada, to see this game today. He'd never been in Indiana, has no connections with Indiana, just has gotten following Indiana program. I hope he enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I can't. He's got 900 done. miles to drive back. <laughs> Well, we appreciate his arrival here in Bloomington to see this ball game. Obviously, Indiana now 10 and 2 on the season, 3 and 0 in the Big 10 has another giant test in front of them on Tuesday night when they travel to West Lafayette to take on the Purdue Boilermakers. That should be some show up there in Mackey Arena. Well, it certainly will. Indiana, of course, now is the only unbeaten team, I guess, in the Big Ten left. And so you know Purdue's going to want to make sure that that uh, comes to an end up there and they will be ready after having lost to Wisconsin. Well, I broadcast this afternoon an exclusive presentation of the Indiana University Network, a division of Learfield Communications under broadcasting rights granted by Indiana University. Rebroadcast or reuse of this presentation Presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of the Indiana University Network. Our announcers are employed by the Indiana University Network for the approval of IU. A special thanks today to our statistician Joe Smith. Join us on Tuesday when Indiana will meet the Purdue Boilermakers from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette. We'll have the pregame show starting at 7:10 on Tuesday night. Am I right about that? Am I or am I wrong about? It? I think that's 7:10. Let me check. Just double check here to make sure. Yep, we're 7:10 Eastern Time, 6:10 Central over most of these same network stations. And don't forget tomorrow night the Bob Knight Talk Show at 7. 6 Central Time over most of these same stations as well. Until then, for Max Gervin, this is Don Fisher. So long, everybody. In the end.